Okay. Perfect. I'm going to call it how to how to make how to make videos that get hey there we are there's Paul I see by the media. Hi. Yay. I'm going to put here. I'm going to put former can I put your former Fox News producer? I am. Yes. You are. Fox News Channel. Know. Yes, I am. Yeah, I was there for 10 and a, 10 and a half years. I was there for a very wow. long time. Wow. So here we are. We're going to it's going to be going live and it, it's we're live before we say we live and this is how Facebook actually works. So I'm waiting for everything to key up. I know you guys are seeing me already. I know there's a delay. This is how Facebook Live works. And so why this is all queuing up, I'm just going to start saying that um, we're going to talk today about making really good video. And I asked one of my friends, she's become a friend. I'm yes. so happy to have met her. Um, and so pop on, ask questions. I have with me Paula Rizzo. Paula Rizzo is a former Fox News producer, did it for 10 and a half years. And we're going to talk today about making good video. So all of us want to do this. And people say, Dr. Veronica, how do you make such good video? How do you get the courage to do it? How does it look good? How does it look natural? And I was telling Paula right before she started, my first ever TV appearance People say you got to go local and then you go higher. Nope. My first, you know how I do things. You, know, you, you have to, you have to be a little contrary. Yeah. You uh, have to yeah. do it the Veronica way. The Veronica way is don't listen to what anybody else says. I was first on your world with Kabuto as my first ever TV experience. My interview went so well that after it, Neil sat back and said, you were a really great, great guest. We're going to have to have you back. And then they did invite me back to do another segment. And that's what you want. However, before you get there, you need to have some background, some training. And I realized that I didn't just pitch and get on TV. I had a friend who I went to college with who was a Emmy Award winning producer for who? Oprah. So when I knew I wanted to do TV, I called up, ring, ring, hello, LeBron Green. You guys might know LeBron. Hello, LeBron Green. Help me. I'm interested in doing some media. Can you train me? I hired him on my team. He trained me how to do good TV. This is a person who won Emmys for arguably the biggest and best show that's ever been on TV that people just hung by um, that we still miss. He said. Yes, 4 o'clock will never be the same for me. 4 p.m. Right. No Oprah. I, I just can't do it. I just, yes. you know, I have to say though, Veronica, um, it's very unusual for someone to start their very first media appearance being on national television. That is not typically how it goes. Of course, you don't typically go the way everyone else does. Um, but usually people do start local news. They start doing their own videos and they start doing local. I worked for a very long time before I was at Fox News Channel in local TV in, in New York City. Um, and, you know, that's where you find a lot of really great guests. And, and national news is looking for something a little bit different. But obviously, you, you fit the bill because they wanted you back. Yes, yes. And so the, the, to me now, a lot of people are just afraid to do video in the first place. We're not even talking local news or anything like that. We're not talking right. starting, you know, anything like we're talking about just making a video on Facebook to people who are your friends is scary for a lot of us. Sure, sure. Just so, being seen. How do we make give us some tips from a TV producer on how we can make really good videos so that when the media goes out there and looks for us? Because I know now everybody can be found and so they google you and they look at your facebook and they look at your linkedin and they look at your youtube oh it's the first thing a producer is going to do if you pitch them all we're going to do is stalk you right we want to see everything that you're doing on the internet every instagram post every tweet every single thing i want to make sure that it aligns with whatever it is that you say you are right you're an expert in xyz thing i want to make sure that's legit and then i want to see it's TV, right? I want to see what you look like. I want to hear what you sound like. I want to make sure that you're going to be able to deliver something that my audience is going to really benefit from. But also, 
if you're if you're talking about you know a producer who's working with an anchor, I want to make sure that you're going to jive with the anchor. That the that if let's say my anchor might ask any questions, you know, I worked for a very long time um, with a with a medical doctor who I would give him the script, and some days he just wouldn't read it. It would just be like whatever it was that he decided he wanted to ask, which is what happens, you know. That's it, that's what happens when you work with with anchors. Um, they may they may or may not take your script, um, and I would make sure that I had guests who could roll with that. You know, you don't want somebody who's going to be too stiff that they only can answer certain questions, you know, I want to make sure that it's a really good conversation. But um, the, the first thing, and now that I'm, you know, out on my own as a, as a uh, media trainer, media strategist, I help people to produce better videos, you know, to be more comfortable on camera, to really get out there in a, in a better way and, and be succinct with what you say and likable on camera and all those things. And the way you do it is through practice, really. But number one is really getting over the imposter syndrome. And for a lot of people, that's the first thing that puts the, puts the, the, the blockers on. Oh, I can't do video. Oh, no one cares to hear from me. Oh, there's a million people talking about that same thing. It doesn't matter. You know, there's no new topic under the sun. Everything is, it can be innovated on, right? Uh, and so just number one is getting over the fact that, that yes, you should be heard. You know, people do need to hear from you. Uh, secondary is really just practicing, just starting to do stuff like this. I mean, I love Zoom. We're, we're doing this through Zoom and then streaming it on Facebook Live. But even just to, to start doing some of your meetings on Zoom, if you're not used to being on camera, because it really forces you to be seen, to be the person who's front and center. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the tips that I always have is just to make sure you're looking right in the camera, you know, look directly in the camera, which is odd, but it's just a conversation, you know, don't, don't get too much in your head. Uh, there's actually a new app that I don't know how new it is, but I've just started using it and I really love it. And I, I'm going to start using it as a media training tool. It's called Marco Polo. Have oh, you heard I of this app? That. I love that. I love it. So the idea is that you have this app and you send video messages back and forth to your, to your friends or your family or whoever it is, right? So instead of texting, you create these little short videos and off it goes. So I started using it with Terry Trespicio, who you know, who's uh, my business partner. She and I created a course called Lights Camera Expert, which Veronica is, uh, is a, a member of. Um, and uh, she was like, just download it. Let's see. So I started downloading it and it really does give you great practice on being on camera and talking talking and, and being able to say something in 30 seconds, you know, and really just getting it out and sending it off. So it gives you some good practice to have conversations and, and be seen. So one of the beauties of Marco Polo, because I use that um, to communicate with certain people, my, my sons who, you know, we love to do that because it's, it's, it's almost real time, but it's not. And so you make a video and then once you stop recording, then the person sees it. Or while you're recording, you can, they can log on and you can see that they're watching, but right. you're not actually seeing them. So right. the Marco Polo is like you're looking in the mirror and you're talking. So you're not, you might know that that other person's watching, but you don't get distracted by it. So yeah, exactly. Like and to me, being on camera when you're actually on TV, because I've been in rooms where the personality or whoever's not there, there's a camera in front of you. Sure. You have to look at that camera and talk to the camera and be natural and have a conversation with a camera that's like this big, rash. Totally. There's no person there. It's very, very odd. I know. Well, the thing I like about Marco Polo too is that it's, it's sort of live, live to tape, I guess. It's live. You can't stop and start over. You can delete it, right? Like let's say you, you screwed up and it's like, oh, that's not what I meant to say. You could delete the, the message. But for the most part, you hit start and you're just going. So it really trains you to, you got to just keep talking. You know, you're not going to be able to stop and edit this. And that's a big problem for a lot of people too. They come to me and say, oh, I really want to do video, but I don't know how to edit. And my argument for that is you should not have to edit. You should be able to do any video, any, you know, no video should really be longer than let's say two minutes. You know, if you're doing like short uh, tip videos, let's say um, uh, two or three minutes. You should be able to get through that without editing, really. You know, like there should not be anything that you're going to say that's so crazy that you're going to have to remember. It, this is just a conversation, right? This is just going to be you talking about your expertise, giving, you know, one tip. And that's, that's another, another thing too is use one tip. Think in very small, bite-sized pieces. You know, it's not like you're going to tell me everything you know about your topic in two minutes. Pick one thing and just focus in on that and that will be your thing. Yeah, I always think of the sound bite first. So I see something that that's a great 
let me say something about that. Sure. So I just I get that one little sound bite and say, let me say something about that. And regarding, mm-hmm. editing, let's say we're doing, we're doing a Zoom now. And when do I edit these? When you're in the beginning, right in the beginning, I might cut off a little bit to just make it start nicer because when we're doing sure. the series and we're starting, there's a little kind of confusion on the beginning. Right. Is it working? Are we on? Yeah. <laughs> so, but otherwise, um, when you, I, I think the, like now that I'm stopping and thinking is more natural to look and say, oh, she, she's a person. She's not a robot. Yeah. And that's something that you get to me very good at just by doing it and having a conversation like we're having right now. We have a right. conversation where we talk about whatever and, you know, Paul is my friend. And so think about it. Like, you know, people do speaking. They say, think like everybody's in underwear. No. I yeah. think, think like the person there is your, is your good buddy, your friend. Yeah. Um, and there is nothing scary about them. Um, they're doing their job. If you're talking to a reporter, they're there doing their job and they want you to look good. A hundred percent. Yes. They want this to be a good segment. They want you to look good. They want to make sure that things you're saying are going to really resonate with their audience because guess what? Then that means they did their job well too, right? I mean, it's really, that's all it's about. But the other, the other key point here too, is when you're talking about, you know, talking to your friends and having a conversation, I always tell experts to Think in terms of being of service, right? Not being salesy. So it's kind of different from a lot of things as we're, you know, entrepreneurs, we're learning about marketing, we're doing all of this kind of stuff. You know, you want to sell yourself in a way, like, right, to be able to show that you know what you're talking about. But the answer to any question is never, oh, buy my book, buy my product, buy my this, buy my that. Look, you have resources that can help people for sure, but you always have to go in with a give first. It always has to be of service. Think about how can you change that audience life? What is it that you know that will really make a difference for them? That's what you should lead with every single time. So to be in of service, this is another uh, uh, one up to this conversation. A lot of practitioners that I work with and that you work with also are too, what I would say is non-specific or to use terminology that just doesn't mean anything. So for right. instance, I got a certification in functional medicine. I'm trained in homeopathy. I'm an eye surgeon. You're like, so what? But when I say I'm a licensed physician and practicing psychic, all of a sudden people say, tell me more. So talk to practitioner audiences, whether it be that they're an MD or a health coach. I mean, don't say you're a health coach and you deal with gut issues. Everybody does that. Give some idea of what gets people to take notice, not just producers, but this is also future patients and clients that will make them want to work with you. Yeah. Think of the headline. Really think through, you know, the idea like when you're reading a newspaper or you're reading a magazine, what is it that makes you stop and say, huh? Oh, I didn't think that. Anything that's a little counterintuitive, a little bit of a twist on something that's traditional, right? How can you take what it is that you do and really like twist it? Like you obviously have like a very good platform for this. You know, not everyone is is a a medical intuitive, you know? Um, And so you come at this from a very different place, but thinking through someone, you know, if if they're a nutritionist or a dentist, you know, how is your approach a little bit different than everybody else's? And it could, it could be part of your personality, part of things that you tell people all the time. And don't underestimate that because so often when I'm doing media training, especially with medical people, they very much like say, oh yeah, everybody does this. Oh yeah, this is just, and I'm thinking, no, no, nobody else does it this way. You know, this is very different. You know, Um, there's a a great example of a a really good, amazing guest who I'd worked with for years and years at Fox. And I kept asking him back again and again. He's a psychologist, uh, a psychiatrist. Um, And uh, I'd bring him back again and again because he was great. And he was my eyes and ears on the ground of his specialty. So he would come to me and say, hey, this is going on in my practice right now. People are coming to me with this kind of problem. I think this is a bigger issue, you know? And it's like, how the heck would I ever know any of that? I wouldn't. So don't underestimate what you see every day and how that might be speaking to a broader audience, you know, out there in the world to be able to serve them. So talk more about, you did specifically medical segments. 
tell us a little bit more about that, just because there's some people say, yeah, I want to be on TV. What kind of medical segments were you doing? What was your thought process behind picking them? Now, you talked about the psychiatrist that say, hey, this is showing up a lot. Let's talk about this. But what you were producing your own ideas. So how did you get those? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, a, I was the senior health producer for Fox News Channel um, for 10 and a half years. And while I was there, you know, everything that we did was on digital. It was on the, the dot com. And then we would feed that to the channel, feed that to our affiliates. So it was, you know, a lot of reach. And so what we would do is, you know, not only look for news of the day and what's topical in the news and what makes sense for today, but also ideas and things that were out there that were really, like I said, a little counterintuitive, some different stuff. You know, I did surgeries. I was in uh, tons of surgeries. Um, we also did pet health, which was very interesting. Uh, you know, it could be really anything. I would do a fitness class. I would do, you know, a nutrition segment. If there was an author that had a book coming out, you know, we'd see if we could do something with them. So there was a, a wide range of stuff that we would do, but it was always about, you know, really honing in on what the audience wanted. And, um, you know, when I was, was first there, the audience obviously was older men. And so we did a lot of stories. I'd always have to think through the lens of why would he care? Would he care about this story? He does not care about back to school lunches, you know, because his kids are probably grown and, you know, he's an older, per older person. We did a lot of prostate. We did a lot of weekend warrior stories. We did a lot of, you know, um, uh, training type stories, you know, uh, fitness training, that kind of thing. So there was, it, it really it was looking through the lens of who is the audience. So anytime you're pitching media, you need to watch so that you can see who is their target demographic. Cause you're not going to pitch something like a back to school segment. If it's not that crowd, you know, that's more of a morning show type thing. Um, so definitely watch, read the magazine, but also look at the advertising. That's my best tip because wow. those advertisers are spending a lot of money because they know exactly who is watching at that time. So if you're watching, you know, today's show, there's going to be very different commercials than when you're watching like the nightly news at night. So, you know, just pay attention to what kind of commercials because that's who they're targeting specifically. That was such a great tip because I was going to say, well, how do I know who's watching what? Mm -hmm. And that was like, okay, I got it. I it's a cheat it. sheet. Okay. Yes. But now let's say you were, on a, you were on a station. There's all these different shows. Do, so for some place like Fox when you were there, is the audience the same pretty much throughout the day or are there different audiences for different shows? Yeah, there are different audiences for different shows. You know, the core, the core demographic is probably the same, but for, think about it. You know, even if you're, you're, you're talking about like if, if you're watching the Today Show, you might not necessarily be watching the, the nightly news. That's not necessarily the same person. You know, Today's Show is younger demographic, female evening newscasts older you watch the commercials every commercial is a medical commercial about some kind of condition and some kind of medicine like it's a totally different demographic um so yeah it does definitely change depending but watching the show and seeing what kind of segments do they do you know so you don't want to pitch something that they've never done um, you know, you don't want to pitch something that it, you can see, oh, they don't really bring people into the studio or they only do two minute pieces on, you know, in, in someone's office or whatever it is. You want to just like pay attention so that when you do pitch, the producer knows, oh, you're not just taking any story and pitching it out to everybody. This is specifically for me and specifically for my audience because, you know, producers want to feel special. We get people beating down our door all day long. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Put me on TV, put me on TV. It's exhausting. It's tiring. Everybody wants to be your friend because you're a network producer. Like, I get it, you know? But being a human, being a really nice person, being of service, sending things to a producer that maybe it's not a pitch. Maybe it's just a story idea that you're not the best person to talk about it, but you said, hey, I thought your audience would be interested in it. It's not something that I talk about, but I thought maybe you'd like to see it. Something like that, you know, just to be, to treat, to treat the producer like a person. So in thinking about going to the next step before we've gotten in media, how can we take that back to how we're making our videos? 
Yeah. Yeah. So being able to be found, that's a huge thing, right? So being able to produce your own content and be out there just working out your material. Think of it like you're, you know, in a, in a comedy club or something, right? Like you're just, this is practice. Be out there, try and make a goal to make one video a week. Even if you don't post it yet, just start doing it to give yourself that, that, that time to start being comfortable in front of the camera, to think about what is it that you could possibly be doing. I mean, I'm working on a whole course about how to produce these videos, how to get them out there. Because people come to me and say, I want to do it, but I don't really know how, or I'm not sure I know what to say. I don't want to look silly. I want to make sure the lighting is perfect and this and that. And like, you know what? Like that stuff will come. It doesn't have to be professionally shot right from the beginning. You know, like you can definitely do a lot of this on your own. Um, I mean, look at us. I mean, this is a you know, microphone that I bought for 65 bucks. You're, you know, you're in your home. I'm in my home where, you know, everything is, is looks pretty good. Uh, there are times. I my ring light. I said Right. A backdrop that looks people say oh it's so pretty that's a backdrop that i got sure off for 20 bucks i mean so. yeah it doesn't have to be super complicated and you know what you will want to maybe produce more highly quality video for you know the intro video on your website or if you're doing a big event maybe you want to get something produced really nice but not all of your videos have to be that caliber you know so just really thinking through even looking at some of the content that you've already done so if you've already written a blog you're already you know writing articles, that kind of thing. How can you make that into a video? How can you make that? How can you talk about that for, you know, a minute, right? To, so, and remember, you're not going to be talking about the whole thing. You're just going to be talking about pieces of it because otherwise it's going to be too, too long. So look at one of those blog posts, you know, that could be your, your call to action for today. Pick one blog post that you've written in the past, you know, month and look at it and say, okay, if I were just explaining this to somebody in a minute, how would I be able to do that and just create that video? And, and it doesn't have to, you know, be something that you post, but it could be something that you, you're starting to get into the, the groove of creating video and putting that, then you can embed that into that, into that article. Yeah. And I, I, I even challenge people to one up it and just, you know, here we are, we have Facebook and Facebook live. And those are people who are your friends. Just go do it. Yeah. Realize that's those people are the friendly audience to you at least. And so just go jump out there and do it. I know I started, I've done videos from the gym on my, <laughs> but I will say you're very extroverted. You're, you're an extrovert. Not everyone is an extrovert. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I realize, you know, people are okay. We're all very conscious about how we look. And so I specifically said, I'm going to get on camera after I've come from the gym. My hair is not done. My makeup's not done. I'm sweaty. And I've had people say, oh, my God, I love that. And it was like, yeah. what? So You're a real person. You know, <laughs> that's it. Showing a little bit of your, your – that's the thing with all of this. People want to fall in love with you. They want to like you as the, as the person. And then anything you say is just great. You know, then they'll follow you. They'll buy your book. They'll do all your things. But they really get to know you and feel like they're connected to you. And that's what video does really well. Podcasts too, you know, um, to be able to be sort of – it's a little bit one-up intimacy level from just reading a blog post from someone. Yeah. So final parting words. Okay. So I got to tell everybody that when you come to my event, Paula has already agreed to be here. She's in New York. And this is a time where you will have a chance to actually interact with her. She will be there and you can ask her little questions on the side. This is a time where it's not just about, we want to one up our level in our, in our skills and taking care of our clients. I help people with the intuition piece and putting it in business. But part of it is I have to be able to get out there and you have to be able to get out there. And part of it now, everybody expects to see videos. So when you're there, you can ask questions to somebody who is an expert at video at the very highest level. Um, and so take advantage of something like this. I wanted to make a Facebook Live. Um, if people are seeing this after the fact, post questions. Um, we, we're happy to answer it. But Paula also does media training. And I'm in one of her groups and had the working with her and her partner, Terry, where we would, she, they, they put us on the hot seat. And say, so Dr. Veronica, blah, 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 you had no idea where they were going to come from. And they just asked you a question and you had to answer the question live. And then what would happen is we would get coaching and feedback as to um, how we could have made it better 
or something that we did that made it not as effective. We may have a habit or something like that that makes it so it's like, that's a little bit unpalatable. Or one thing that, although I've done a lot of video, when they put me on the hot seat, all of a sudden I was like, <gasps> <laughs> It happens to everybody. <laughs> so it, it's really good to have the practice for somebody like a Paula to say, okay, do it. And so, um, you know, I, I reach out to Paula, say, I'm, I'm interested in getting better just at making little videos. And I would love to be on the media, but I, I'm just, I'm mortified to make a Facebook live. And so Paula, right. you do just take those baby steps so that, cause I'm telling you, I didn't just get on and get good. I had a coach before I did anything. I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't know how to do it. And so I asked somebody and that's why I went out there and, you know, hit the grand slam the first time out of the box. And so if you're, you can do that. I tell people you can do that too. You just got to have the right coach or mentor behind you. So if you're not thriving, think about, do you have the right trainer, coach, or mentor? And a trainer, coach, or mentor is somebody who's done it before and knows it. Party words, Paula. Well, uh, I would love to help whoever's out there. So if you go to paularizzo.com, um, I actually have a checklist there for how to become uh, a go-to media expert. So you can download that and, uh, you know, I'd be happy to help. And like I said, I am starting a, a course soon about how to do just that, how to create these videos. Um, but my parting word, my, my uh, final thing is that when you do uh, shoot videos with your iPhone, please hold your phone sideways. Not up and down. Up and down is fine if you're doing Instagram. Um, and I guess for Facebook Live too, I think it depends. But if you're doing videos that you want to put on YouTube later, right, um, I would hold your, hold your camera sideways. So the button, the home button should be on the right and it should be like this, not up and down. Because if you shoot up and down, you get those little wings on the side and then your video is this big. If you turn it sideways, it fills up the whole screen. It looks way better. So... That is my final tip for uh, video production. Follow-up question about that. I'm, yes. I'm sorry. I got to ask a follow-up question. When I turn my video on the side, the camera is to the left. And I feel like I don't know where to look. So when you're going to just that, look directly in to the camera. In, right into the camera. Don't look at yourself. That's the other thing. Like right now, see, like right now, I'm looking at myself. And now I'm looking at the camera, looking directly in the camera. As hard as it is, you have to engage with that camera. Even though I can't see the person, it looks so much better afterwards. The video will look way better. So just as hard and weird as it is, look directly in the camera and always have this sideways, unless you do Instagram video. Instagram video, you have to do up and down. So Instagram is up and down. Mm -hmm. Facebook is, we have to do it sideways? Yeah, Facebook I would do sideways. I think you can do it either way, but play around with it and see what it looks like. You know, you want to make sure you have it look the best possible. So like for me, it's being able to have it fill up that entire screen rather than just having the little, you know, little wings on the side. Beautiful. That, I think that's a nugget right there that everybody can take away and say, oh, now I know how to shoot a good video on the phone. So Paula Rizzo, thank you so much for being here. Thank on. you. And everybody, paularizzo.com, and you know where to find me. Here you are on my Facebook page. Ask me questions, watch the video. I'm going to do a transcript of this, this too and send it out to people who say, I don't want to watch the whole video. That's the other tip I do. I give people everything. I give the audio. I give the visual. I give the transcript. So how do I produce so, many con so much content? Repackage and repurpose. Thank Very you. smart. Thank you.